What's up my people, Joel from Technological here and today I have another video for you guys and I want to talk about where do you get games? So if you're like me and you recently got a Windows handheld PC like a Legion Go I have here or ROG Ally or a Steam Deck that you might have finessed your way into getting Windows on things like that, you might be wondering where can I get games? There's so many different stores. What should I do? Most people are loyal to Steam. I understand why. They have a great way of putting all your games together in a library, having a simple place to just get all your games. And it, the storefront is pretty easy and there's a nice little review board and all that. So it makes sense to get your games on Steam. But there's other options out there, especially if you're on a Windows PC. And I just want to showcase a couple of those. So. While I've been using this for a couple months now, I would say my main way of getting games is Xbox Game Pass. And click that over here right now. And the reason I use Xbox Game Pass is because it's such a great deal, right? We have a, if you get Game Pass Ultimate, you could get some deals out there. There's some ways of getting some Game Pass cards for a little cheaper if you buy them from another, you know, region. Things like that. I'm not going to explain how to do those things, but if you do your Google search, you could find ways to get Game Pass for a cheaper price than you would pay normally. And so what I did is I loaded up my account with Game Pass for probably about three years. So I'll have three years worth of Game Pass and I'll be able to play any of these games that are coming out. For example, Indiana Jones, when it comes out in about a week, I'll be able to play that on day one. Stalker 2 just recently came out available on day one on Game Pass, Call of Duty Black Ops 6, same thing, all of these games. And then you just have this amazing library of games. And if you own an Xbox as well, I feel like it's the best of both worlds where you could have all the PC games, all the Xbox games, and then you have cloud saving in between those two. So it's almost like you have a Nintendo Switch, but for PC games and Xbox games where you could play majority of your time on the handheld and then when you get home or you want to play on a bigger screen you just turn on your xbox upload that save and now you have your continued uh playthrough so that is one of the major ways i play on xbox right now at the moment the games i am currently playing are mass effects uh the trilogy i'm currently playing that for the first time i'm also playing dungeons of hinterberg which is a nice underrated indie gem there and then from these list of games that I have downloaded, the only other ones that I'm currently playing uh, here and there are Inscription and Lies of P. Not the actual, I have the actual Lies of P, not the demo. I don't know why the demo is showing up there. And yeah, that is what I'm playing currently right now. I have all these other games downloaded, but I haven't really touched them as much. I did play Nine Souls on a previous video if you want to check that out. But everything else that you see downloaded here at the moment are just downloaded, but I haven't touched yet. So I am looking forward to playing Sea of Stars, Pentiment, Little Kitty Big City, and all these other games. But for the moment, what I've been playing is the ones I listed before. And those are the games I'm currently playing on Xbox and how I am playing them. My one qualms that I will say about Xbox Game Pass is that you never know when the games are going to leave the service. So if a game does leave the service, you will have to stop playing that game or hopefully beat that game prior to that date. But if you stick to the Xbox exclusive games, those are probably never going to leave the service. So you'll have those games forever as long as you have Game Pass, which is not bad. And it's a pretty good deal, in my opinion, when you have a full list of I don't even know how many games they're up to now. But yeah, 452 games that you could download on your PC and play. That's really cool. And then when you add in the factor, if you have an Xbox and cloud gaming, I think it's worth it. So that's my main way of getting games right now, but I do have other ways and a lot of them involve free games, which is pretty cool. So a lot of people don't notice, but if you have an Amazon Prime account, you have access to Amazon games. So I'll click that open right now. It might take a little bit to get open, but a lot of people don't understand that this comes as one of your benefits when you have Amazon Prime already. So if you are like myself and you live in a household that uses Amazon Prime for deliveries, for basic household goods and things like that, you have access to all of these games. So if you take a look here, uh, you just have to download the Amazon Games app or uh, storefront. 
and then you'll have all these games. You can also do this based on the web browser, but I just found it easier to have everything in one place. So I got the storefront app. But if you go over here to free games with Prime, these are currently all the games that are right now free if you have Prime. And yeah, these might be not the best games, but every now and then you do get some gems, which is really cool. So if I go over to all the games that I have from Amazon Prime, these are all games that I've downloaded for free from Amazon Prime over the years. And I did this before I even had a gaming PC just because I knew I should take advantage of this deal because you never know when you are going to get that gaming PC or whenever you get a gaming handheld. So I would advise people to take this even if they don't have a, play to play, a way to play these games right now. These are your benefits. You're getting them. You're paying for their Amazon Prime service. So you might as well get everything that you can out of that service. So all of these games here that I'm showing have all been free from Amazon Prime. And a lot of people are going to say that's not free. You're paying for Amazon Prime. But what I'm trying to say is that not a lot of people know about this. So take advantage of this while you can. These are all available, were all available at one point through the Amazon Prime free games subscription, which is cool. And literally all you have to do is go to Amazon Prime Gaming, I believe. Just search that, put in your Amazon Prime credentials, sign in, and then you're able to get all these. I believe it is limited to one person per household. So if you are the sole gamer in your house, take advantage of this. If there's other gamers in your house, do it before they find out. <laughs> but yeah, you can see there's been a lot of gems over the years on this service. So it's not just bloatware. Obviously, a lot of it is. But there are some good ones in there as well. You have Turok here. You have Earthlock, which is pretty good. You have Air, which is also well like flame in the flood down well hotline miami 2 hotline miami 1 was available as well at one point uh some pretty good indie gems and yeah every now and then you do get a pretty good like i want to say triple a game but you do get a pretty good game like blasphemous is one of the games that was on here recently things like that so it's pretty cool i would say definitely worth it you're not going to play all of these games obviously but every now and then you get a gem like the messenger or Hotline Miami, and you're gonna play that, and it's worth just downloading all these games, just in case. You never know when you're gonna wanna play something randomly, too. Blasphemous here. Boomerang Foo is a great game. Uh, if you're gonna play with a bunch of people, this is a great party game. Definitely recommend that. Do Not Feed the Monkeys is a game I've been interested in for a long time. I didn't even know I had it already. I always see this game on the Switch eShop, and I'm like, ooh, I should play that one day. Meanwhile, I already had it. So you see things like that, these are all games that are currently owned tied to my Amazon Prime account. So as long as I have Amazon Prime, I believe I should have these games as well. And I think even if I install them now, I don't know, I would have to test that, but if I install them now, I don't see how they would just take away the license, but maybe they would. So, but as long as I have Amazon Prime, which I don't see myself getting rid of anytime soon, I'll have these games. and. Uh, pretty much weekly or monthly, they come out with a new game that you could install or claim. So I usually just claim everything and then install the ones that I want to actually play. So yeah, that's another quick tip. I hope you guys, uh, I know a lot of people don't know about that. So I hope you guys uh, start doing that, take advantage because Amazon is taking your money anyway. So you might as well get everything out of it. And then my last but not least, what I wanted to do is show off uh, the Epic Game Launcher. I know a lot of people hate on Epic, but one cool thing that they do, I have never actually bought a game on the Epic Store, ever in my life. But look at all these games that I'm able to get, because if you scroll down here, weekly, they usually give out a free game. So right now, Brotato is the free game of the week. You see next week, it'll be Bus Simulator 21. The week after that will be Lego Star Wars. Or actually, that's going to be the same next week, starting in about two days. So in two days, you're going to get Bus Simulator and Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, which is crazy because I actually paid full price for this game on Nintendo Switch, and I didn't like it. So <laughs> look at that. If I would have waited a little bit, I would have gotten it for free on Epic. And then if you go over to the library, these are all the games that I've gotten for free over the years. Just by grabbing those weekly games, I believe in total there's about 96 games. And these are not 
just like your random game. Some of them, these are games are pretty critically acclaimed, like Tome I know is critically acclaimed. We have Fallout, uh, Fallout 2, Fallout Tactics, Callisto Protocol, which is a pretty big game. Maneater, Trek to Yomi, Loop Hero, Death's Gambit, like Floppy Knights, Myth Force, Shredder's Revenge, Ninja Turtles, the Tomb Raider game, Midnight Suns, that's a pretty big game to get for free. Uh, Death Stranding, completely free. These games completely free on the service. They just gave them out weekly. Uh, I would say check in on this every week. Yeah, you might be loyal to Steam, but these are free games. Neo, like, these are really good games that are free, available, and they're giving them away. Why not just take them? And you don't have to pay for an extra service. And I think these are really, really good to build that, build that uh, library on your PC. If you're new to PC gaming, for sure, just come in and grab that weekly game. Why not? But yeah, guys, that is all for this video. Hope you guys like uh, what I showed you in this video. Hope you guys uh, got some tips going forward on how to get the most out of your Windows PC, how to get the most free games or where to get games in general besides Steam. Um, like I said, Steam is still the GOAT, is the best, uh, I say, online gaming store, but there's other options out there, and when you get into these games and you start realizing all these different storefronts offer some free games and things like that, you might as well take advantage of it. So I hope you guys do the same, get as many free games as possible, because games are expensive, this hobby is expensive, gaming is expensive, so... Get what you can out of the industry because the industry is going to get what they can out of you. <laughs> so, yes, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And peace.